Adrian, so here we are again. That's uh, right, Andy. And we are. You've been busy, haven't you? You've got some new stuff. We have been very, very busy. Uh, in fact, we came up, I think, with three major updates this year. Um, so let's start from the top. Um, the biggest thing for us right now, obviously, is the Fireface UFX3, which is the successor of the UFX Plus. People will ask me now, what are the major differences? Um, the main difference is now we have USB 3 only, um, and we, s we um, did that because for us the performance is the same for anyone who uses RME, especially with higher channel counts. They know our USB 3 drivers are in fact superior, if not the same as Thunderbolt. So for us, there is no real benefit in using Thunderbolt. You can adapt it really easily. Um, you don't have problems with uh, anything to, to adapt it to. So it's really, really reliable and it's cheap for the end customer because the USB 3 cable as well is not that expensive as Thunderbolt. So we thought, okay, let's go for the USB 3 route solely. And apart from that, we uh, up the specs for everything. So we have newly uh, developed converters in it. It now features uh, USB 3 also for the class compliant mode, which is huge. So all those 188 channels that you have, uh, all the 94 ins and outs, you can now use on USB 3. So in the future right now, uh, USB 3 class compliant is still at the beginning, but just imagine that you can use your iPad Pro, your uh, 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 Linux computer, and drive all the channels. So all the analog IOs plus the MATI IO, everything is now available uh, over USB 3 class compliant audio, which is huge. For Superbooth, uh, this is also, in fact, quite interesting, is the fact that all the outputs now are DC coupled. So not only like in the, in the UFX plus the headphones, but also, in fact, all the outputs on the back are now DC coupled, so okay, control voltage can be sent out to the um, to the to, to the backs. And this is, for in fact, something we started with the UCX2. You know now the UCX2 M1610 Pro. All the outputs are in fact DC coupled. On the AD side, it doesn't make uh, that much sense because we we had to implement buffers, which would reduce the audio quality. So for us, it's just um, CV on the outputs. But, but I think this is a great benefit. Apart from that, all the digital IOs can now be used simultaneously. So SPDIF coax, SPDIF optical, and AES, they can all run simultaneously. So you have a, a little bit more output. Durec, of course, which is great, is now also available on the UFX3, like it was on the UFX Plus, and uh, it's the same specs, essentially. But uh, we now have something really cool. I hope I find it now. Uh, which is um, in the channel settings, we have track names so now. So what you can do now, if I, ho I hope I find it now, but uh, nah. Oh, you're on the spot, pressure. Uh, I hope I find it in the settings. Wait, now. Where is it? Where was I? There it is, channel type. And there is track name. So. We are now finally have this feature in the UFX3. We started with the UCX2. You can have the um, track names, the custom track names, written to the multi-file. So in fact, the UFX3 is a 188-channel audio recorder. Just plug in a, a, thumb a USB thumb drive or anything to record your audio on 24-bit, 192 channels. Uh, sorry, 192 kilohertz. Everything is up and running. This is pretty, pretty darn cool. And it can record the whole channel count. It can now record the whole channel count that simultaneously whilst uh, recording, by, uh, uh, for example, on your iPad or your computer. So, so this is a backup system. So what are the, sp the uh, technical specs for this? Because obviously that's quite demanding on whatever you plug into it. Does it have to be a special type of no, USB it's a device? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's USB and it works uh, for, for us. Um, um, that's it. It's just uh, F, uh, right now FAT32 uh, uh, formatted uh, uh, drives. But apart from that, it's just uh, what we what we do with uh, with that uh, with that system. So it runs. It works. 
it's beautiful. Um, it's just like put in your normal USB thumb drive and you're good. Um, yeah, that's that's mainly about the UFX3. So essentially, better ADDA, CV control, uh, CV outputs now, DC coupled outputs. You now have custom tr uh, channel track names in there, and uh, uh, yeah, more refinement on that on that end. Down and below, when is this going to be available? This is we, uh, available already. On. This is now out for everyone to enjoy. So you can grab them now. Um, yeah. Down there, we have something that many people heavily requested, and this is the 12 mic Dante. We came up with the 12 mic uh, a few years ago, which is 12 inputs um, of amazing RME microphone preamplification. It now also has Dante. So not only is this a, a Dante uh, mic preamp, but it's also a Dante format converter. So not only do you have the Dante, but you could also uh, convert MADI, which it has on the back as well, to Dante and vice versa. So just imagine what you can do with that system in your rig, you know? Going back from Dante to MADI uh, or, or the other way around, expanding your Dante network. This is really, really cool, and this makes RME, for me, always, always great. And how does ADAT fit into that world? Um, ADAT is, is, is also available. Um, we have three uh, ADAT outs, so you can have the, it, it up to 192 kilohertz. Um, so yeah, that's essentially what we're, what we're doing there. It has ADAT and it works. But we have uh, decided to go for ADAT outs on this one. So three ADAT outs, meaning if you double up uh, or quadruple the sample, uh, the sample rate, you still have all the 12 channels available. So that would work nicely with uh, Babyface as an extra input. For example, Babyface, uh, uh, Babyface, it works pretty nicely, of course, with the UFX3. Um, hook them up to, uh, via MADI, and then you could also integrate your UFX3 uh, into the Dante network uh, by sending channels from UFX3 to, uh, uh, via MADI to, to the 12 mic and convert that to Dante. So this is a very modular nice. setup, which uh, gives you a lot of possibility to, to go in and back out into the system. Really, really clever and cool. Oh, that's useful. The next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is the ADI2 Pro SE. We, uh, we talked about this last year, and we had a prototype. Now it's, uh, now it's out. And essentially, it's um, a step up from the ADI2 Pro um, that we had before. It's still, it's still available, of course, um, but we, we up the specs. We have um, um, amazing selected ESS con uh, converter chips. We have now a balanced mode, which gives you a lot of power. Each of those uh, outputs each have uh, 2.1 watts of power, wow. so you can drive even the most demanding, and the balanced mode combines these ones, so whatever planar uh, uh, headphone that you have that needs a lot of power, can be uh, driven with that one as well. And that's on a 4 mil. Yeah, that's yeah. A, uh, this Pentacon yeah. uh, uh, con connector type. And you just plug it in there. It's automatically detected, no switching around, and it works just like a charm. The one thing that I want to mention, apart from the fact that still you have your e extra three and four outs, that was really important for the mastering guys. They uh, really enjoy the sound quality of the original ADI2, but they said, hey, we want uh, uh, our insert loop, you know? We want to have the possibility to run ana our analog chain yeah. out, of the, uh, out of the computer, go into the analog chain, back into the computer. That uh, was doable, but uh, I I back in the day, you would have to use another headphone output. Now you can co uh, connect it on the back and just run your monitoring and have your analog chain. This is now doable with the ADI2 4 Pro SE. And the last thing that I want to mention about the ADI2 Pro 4 SE is the phono preamp. We actually have now a digital phono preamp built in right into the ADI2 4 Pro SE. And that is um, mostly for moving magnet cartridges. So you just can use your turntable, hook it up via line inputs into the ADI24, 
use the uh, switch for uh, the phono mode, and then you have a digital phono preamp, which sounds absolutely magnificent. We have an anti-rumble feature, so what we're doing is we're canceling out uh, face problems uh, on the bass, so you get an even more clearer and more defined low end. It's a breeze to use. For people that want to know, OK, how do I connect uh, the ground cable? Um, you just uh, use one of those pins on the side and just connect that there oh, okay, and just put cool. it on. So then you have your grounding also available. Oh, right, cool, I think yeah. that's, th that's, that's, that's one of the beauties. And by the way, you can, um, if you have like an analog switch box, which I have in my studio, I have one input for the phono preamp and one for my mastering chain. I just switched it around and have two setups, one for phono preamp and one for, uh, for my normal mastering chain. And then I switch with the remote between the setups. That's pretty, really cool. So oh, that's good. everything is, uh, can be done with that remote. You can custom map so many different uh, features, like, for example, uh, like, you know, turning uh, on and off the EQ, uh, all, all those things. OK, for those of you uh, don't know, uh, you have EQs on all outputs. So essentially, you could uh, correct your headphones. If there, is a, if there is a frequency that you don't like, you can enable the EQ. You can um, have. Also, um, the, um, the, the curves different for the left and right hand channel. If you have some hearing problems on the, uh, on the left, uh, left ear, for example, you can use a different curve. So you can really match the headphones to your listening uh, experience and to your ears. And I guess you could use this for basic room correction too, if you wanted to. Exactly. This is uh, this is something that we uh, uh, did an, on our uh, YouTube channel. We um, uh, talked a lot about the ADI2 DAC as a monitoring front end. If you think about it, you can use the ADI2 DAC, for example, with a baby face, hook it up via ADAT, and then use that as a mo monitoring front end. So you hook up your main outs on the back, so for example your speakers, then you have still on the front your headphone, and then you could, for the speakers or for the, for the headphone, you could say, hey listen, I want to have a different, uh, I want to have a different EQ curve, you know, and then, then I could uh, select, select my EQ curve here, and could set that and have my room corrected, uh, uh, room corrected, essentially. But yeah. Hardware room correction over everything, yeah. without any software involved. And you can, the, the great thing about the DAC is you can either use it via Toslink or uh, ADAT or, yeah, essentially, um, so you can hook it up uh, with the Babyface Pro FS or the UFX2, the UFX3. You're not dependent on one converter. That's a great thing. We have so many inputs and outputs, digital. They are all available, and it's up to you. So maybe you start with a Babyface Pro, and then you say, I want more I.O. I need the MADI channels, for example. Then you up for the UFX3, but it's still the same. Just use the ADAT on the side and go into the uh, ADI2 DAC, and the settings are the same. So that's really, really cool. The last thing I want to mention is there's more. There's even more. We've <laughs> been okay. really, really busy, and uh, my mouth is all already drying up. Um, is DigiCheck NG? DigiCheck NG uh, used to be first on the Mac platform, but uh, in the last couple of weeks, we finally made it to um, to Windows as well. So, so uh, for two days now, we have a public beta uh, in our forum. So if you want to check out DigiCheck for the Windows user. Please do. And the great thing about it is uh, we have better frame rates, and it's completely resizable. So look at this. How cool is that? <laughs> okay. DigiCheck is now completely resizable to your screen. And it works like a charm. It, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I, I love it, and I just, just lo love to look at it. The one thing that I uh, enjoy about DigiCheck, uh, for those of you who use, um, for example, VST, um, VST uh, metering system software. The problem is sometimes, depending on the DAW that you are using, you are dependent on the graphic uh, graphic uh, uh, engine that is run within that DAW. You can bypass that by using DigiCheck. DigiCheck runs independently from your DAW because it's actually doing the calculation in the interface. Meaning you can also have bet not only better and more accurate metering. But the frame rates are better. That's something that I experienced. Depending on the on the on the software that you're using, on the DAW you're using, if you're using a metering interface, 
that, that can be problems. Not the case with DigiCheck if it's run standalone. So I think that's a pretty huge point on using um, uh, DigiCheck as well. Also, the ballistic is great. So if you do right click, you have uh, different settings, uh, not only for, for naming everything, but you have, sorry, the appearance. Um, we will uh, have more, more on that later. So you can change how the RMS meters behave, how the font size is. There's a lot of things to do. You can uh, decide which input uh, uh, DigiCheck should listen to and which, which it should analyze. It's a really clever and powerful system. So I think um, this is, oh, by the, by the way, this is free. Every RME user can download DigiCheck for free. This is also part of the RME software bundle. Well, I think I need to uh, let you go and have a drink of water. Oh, or, thank or you so much. Else. And it's a pleasure to see you again, Andy, and to all the Sonic State users. Thanks very much. Enjoy Adrian. the Super Great Show.